In your estimation, how many other women of color, black women, are you seeing in your capacities? Uh, interesting. So um, I have not seen many. Uh, I think that uh, the, 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 the challenge is getting uh, women the opportunity to uh, be exposed to those roles. I think that there is a greater need for, uh, we spoke about earlier, um, inclusion in some of the, the, the peer networks, having more role models, having um, um, women understand that they do have the capability to actually, you know, take on these challenges. So I, I, I think that, um, uh, again, further, further mentorship, all of those types of things can help us get those numbers uh, increased. So in addition to your engagement from, from the computer, the programming side, and, and learning all of that, the information system, I also hear, and I think I'm hearing from you, that you're prepared in other areas. So if we're talking about a young person, because we know that there is no straight line to the, to the points where we get to, when you look at the point where you are, Yes, you started out with the programming and, and doing that piece. What are some other things that you had to learn that you went after for yourself, other, other things that you brought in to your experiences to prepare you for where you are right now? Sure. Um, I, I had to, and we talked a little bit about this uh, as well, I had to learn how to network. I had to learn how to like networking. Um, uh, I am naturally an introvert. And uh, in this space, if you're going to um, establish the relationships, if you're going to build alliances, you've got to network, you've got to get out there and know people. And so I had to say, well, Alva, you may be an introvert, but you're going to have to masquerade as an extrovert and get this done. I also had to um, uh, make myself more knowledgeable of management. I had to learn on the job because I was uh, promoted because I was a crack shop programmer. And I just kept getting promoted and nobody's giving me leadership classes, management classes or right, anything right, of that nature. Right. So I had to, um, in some cases early on, I went to, and I, I paid on my own to go to management um, uh, uh, forums or classes, and uh, conferences rather. I bought books on management. I read them from uh, cover to cover. And then after a while I started tapping my own uh, company and saying, hey look, I, this is a class that interests uh, me on leadership. Uh, are you willing to pay for it? And they said, sure, we'll pay for it. So I had to get all of those types of things done in order to build you know, my leadership skills. And that's, that's the piece that I really wanted to ensure that you know, is able to be brought home, that when you have young people who are saying, yes, I'm a program, I, I know coding, I know programming, I, I know this, this kind of things, and the, the typical um, perception or the understanding uh, or people's perception of uh, someone who's involved in IT is that they're going to be the quiet, the, mm -hmm. the geek, the person that just sits behind the computer, right. lacks social skills, mm -hmm. and it, it requires so much more. And so that's why it was so critical for us to be able to ensure that people understand this from yes. looking at where you are, for especially for young people yes, looking to absolutely. be able to move forward with, you know, from where they are now and looking at where you want to say, oh, I want to do what she does. Right. There's a stubbornness with some of the young folks, again, that think that they deserve it purely because of their technical talents. And it's something that we're going to just have to keep beating down <laughs> into them mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. that won't do it. That's not enough. you got to have the, the, all of the other pieces as well. Now, with, some of, with so much focus around coding and you know, we want to get everybody to understand coding and what it is and what it, what it means. Mm -hmm. Give me your take on that. What, in addition to that, would you want to see um, that's a part of the education and the exposure and the experience that, especially for young people, that they're getting? Yeah, so, you know, coding uh, is, is at the core uh, important, but at the same time, coding doesn't need to be the only thing. There mm -hmm. are so many different roles uh, in IT, um, and, the, and and because you don't choose coding, doesn't mean you're not, you know, in the club. Because mm -hmm. there's still, you know, um, other other opportunities. There's product and decisions and strategy. All of those things that are equally as important as the coding itself. 
And a lot of women, um, sometimes they will um, kind of duck under that because uh, people will tell them, oh, well, that's not really engineering. Well, then you're not a real IT person. But they, in addition to the coding, you still need to be able to st think strategically. It's great to have a phenomenal idea. It's great to, you know, be a crack shot coder. But if you can't influence someone mm -hmm. to move with that, mm -hmm. then it's just your idea right. <laughs> and only your idea. And I think that's one of the critical things of probably all the skills that you can gather. All of them are important, but you really ultimately have to be someone that can influence and to sell, you know, yourself, your ideas, your product. If you can do that, you've got a, a pretty good way up the, up the ladder. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. You have just truly given I think a, a number of people, a true roadmap, you know, yes. you have the idea, know how to code it, but you've got to be able to create, package that and sell that yes. product. What is the thing that, that you're so passionate about and what you do right now? What's your sweet spot with what you do right now? Being uh, promoted, I thought at one point, promoted past my passion, which was coding. I said, how can I get excited about people management? You know, because coding, you know, there's, an, there's a result. There's something that comes from it. You can see it. You can touch it. And, um, but I started focusing on developing the talent within my group, people, man people development. As I saw people who went from un being unsure, didn't know whether they could do it, actually now develop into folks that are now supervisors and managers and running, Wonderful. you know, project teams. I said, oh, okay, I can do that. <laughs> you know, that, the, you know, I, I think I've just found my, my, my next passion. And then also seeing ideas move from the sort of the ideation phase actually come to fruition. And, you know, all of the thought leadership and all of the input that went into that, that actually is something real and my company is making money doing it. I said, oh my God, this is it, <laughs> you know. Oh, so God. I began to um, find all of these different little avenues um, where I could have um, impact and change and be fulfilled uh, by it. So my sweet spot first is people. I just, I just love people. A lot of folks say I should have like Psych D or something text <laughs> to put on my door because I literally do have folks that come in here all the time. What do you think about this? And you know, we just share. We just share, and I'm very accessible and approachable. And I think um, that's what makes people want to just work for me. You look at where you got started, and you you see your growth and evolution. That still involves where you got started, but yes. y you're growing as an individual as the same time how you grow professionally. Also, right. um, what are you aspiring to beyond this point? I'm doing the PhD. And Why? When we got into the global piece. I wanted to actually learn more about it. And folks kidded me and said, well, you can Google <laughs> and find out more about global development. But I really wanted to understand the academics of it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, taking now the real life experience that I'm living and actually add to the body of knowledge um, um, of uh, knowledge management among global software development teams, trying to help other practitioners understand how they cut through some of the barriers that I talked about earlier mm -hmm. with culture and language, work context, all of those things. There's no real secret sauce uh, to it, but I'm trying to help figure that all out with all the other researchers that are out there. And so I'm real passionate about um, that project because global software development is not going away. It's going to only continue to increase and we're going to have to be able to position ourselves to work in this type of environment. Um, it, it continues to grow too as well because you have clients all over the globe. So these people that are in the Australians and Malaysias and whatnot, they're there real time with clients that we have real time, you know, uh, in those places. And from a cost standpoint and whatnot, it only behooves us to continue to grow in that area. I do want to write and continue to do research actually. Um, and not so much um, entrepreneurial activity, but just you know, continue to write, do research, and contribute 
to the bottom knowledge, whether it's along the, the lines of, of, of uh, knowledge management in these global teams, I just want to give back. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, we thank you so much for your time. This was such a thank wonderful, you. wonderful conversation. And um, we're looking forward to, to just see the kind of work that you'll continue to do. It was my pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks.